Hello everyone, how are we doing today? And welcome to today's video. So today we are going into a little bit of math and finishing up chapter three here, which is all still Mendelian genetics. And today we're going to be, look, going to be looking at probabilistic mathematics and the chi-square test. So what do all these words mean? So, you know, genetics is all probability. So it's gonna involve some math and there are a couple different equations we can use to determine probability, a couple different rules we can use when analyzing results for different combinations and so forth. And then how do our results compare with our expected? So we expect a three to one ratio, but what if we don't observe a three to one ratio? How do we determine if the difference between those are due to chance or something else is at play? Maybe it's non-Mendelian or you know, co-dominance, some other genetic fashion that's throwing off the results. So let's get into this one here by looking at some probabilistic mathematics. So just a big word that means different rules that we have here. So I copied and pasted these results from the previous video about the green pointed or turquoise round Kelpies we had um, from the previous example. So we're gonna use these results here at the end for some of these um, examples now here. I just didn't want to switch back and forth between the OneNote files to show. So the first rule we have, or the first question you could have is, so the likelihood of two or more independent events occurring together equals the product of their probability. So product is the multiplication rule. So what this means is the probability of A and B co-occurring, meaning it's the same event. So to do this, it's multiplication, it's the product. So it's the probability of A times the probability of B. So if we're looking at the example up here, uh, it's going to be, the questions are going to be in the form of and. So what's the probability of a turquoise round and a turquoise pointed. So that means they're occurring together. And to figure that out, it's three eighths times one eighth. So remember, that would equal three sixty fourths. So three eighths times one eighth, three sixty fourth. So now we can look at the next type. So the likelihood of any one of two or more mutually exclusive events. So here, these occur together. In this example, mutually exclusive. So these are using the words either or or. So what if I ask, what's the probability of green round or green pointed? So that's two separate events occurring. So here, these are the same events occurring together. These are occurring separately. So this is a sum of the probability of each. So this is called the addition rule. So here, if we look at this one, this is the probability of A or B occurring. So it's the probability of A plus the probability of B. So if we look at our example up here, so if we have three eighths, plus one eighth, so you add those together, that's four eighths or one half. So slightly different results there. So either or, so mutually exclusive events. So one or two, so you, can, you add them together. So this all comes down to terminology of the question. So you wanna make sure you read the question carefully. You ever see any of these keywords in the question comparing two of the possible outcomes, you wanna put a big box around it so you know that you're looking at a probability and you need to either multiply or add two or more of the following events. And another thing you could have here, so a subset of possibilities, determine a likelihood of one event within the subset. So this is a conditional probability. This isn't necessarily a rule, it's just you know a form of a question you may get. So let's go back to our dihybrid cross here. Remember this is a three to one ratio of green to turquoise. Uh, so if you draw this out real fast, so here's the Punnett square here. So here, 
the question could be formulated as, you know, of the green offspring, so these ones are green, what is the likelihood that it is heterozygous? So you don't include this one over here. You're only looking at the green. So of the green offspring, two out of three are heterozygous. So that's conditional probability. So you gotta read the question carefully. Every little word in the question could mean something. All right, so next uh, topic is predicting offspring sets or combinations. And the best example way to show this is using an example. So here we're looking at albino versus normal pigmentation. So in our cross is a heterozygous cross. Um, again, that's that three to one ratio. You don't, but you don't have to do these every time if you end up knowing them, but I'm just drawing them out for you right now. So three to one ratio there for the albino. So one albino, three normal pigmentation. So our question is, what is the likelihood of having three albino children out of five? Hmm, how do we answer this one? Well, we use equations that are given to us. I'm not gonna go into the derivations of these equations, but there are two options to do this. The first possibility is called binomial expansion. So P plus Q to the N. So one thing we do have to define with these equations are the variables. So here is P is equal to the probability of one phenotype. So I always choose P to be the dominant phenotype. So here it would be, you know, the probability of the dominant phenotype so of normal pigmentation is three fourth. Q is the other phenotype or albino is one fourth. N is the total number of offspring. Total is five. So N is equal to five. Now, how do we do this binomial expansion problem? So if you ever, if you search binomial expansion on your own, you'll find these binomial expansion tables. And so where N, you wanna look for N, which is five is what we're looking at here. That's your exponent. And then this, all these, you'll see these tables written as a to the fifth plus five, a to the fourth, b. So you'll see p and q replaced with a and b. So just keep that in mind. Now all these exponents in each of these terms here add up to five. So four plus one, three plus two, two plus three, and then uh, one plus four and five again. And it's a table, it makes this giant pyramid. Now, how can we use this? This looks like a lot, right? It's not as bad as it looks, uh, just, you know, to let you know, it's, you know, it looks scary, but it's not. So remember, we're looking for three albino children of five. Let's write it again here. So how can we use this equation to answer this question? Well, if we find a term, remember P is the probability of one phenotype, Q is the probability of the other. So we can use this to help us figure out our exponents. So of the five children, three shall be albino. So Q should be cubed. So we wanna find a term where Q is cubed. Two of the five will have the normal phenotype. So you, P is our normal phenotype. So you want that squared. So the term you want here is 10 P squared Q to the cubed. That's all you need. That's how we use this binomial expansion table is to find our combination. So if I said, if two albino children out of five, what's the likelihood? You find Q squared, well, you find, yeah, Q squared P cubed. So you'd use this term instead. Um, if I said, what's the likelihood of five albino children out of five, you'd use this term then. So P would be zero in that case. So you use whatever term you have here that adds up to five. And that's the uh, really cool thing about this table. And then you just plug in chug. Uh, so P here is equal to the probability, which is three fourths squared times one fourth cubed. So then this equals, if you would do it in your calculator, 0 0.088 probability. So very, very low probability of having three albino children out of five. So that's option one. Again, you have to read a binomial expansion table in order to do that. Option two is this one. It's an equation. Set up slightly different. We have a couple different terms here. So here's the equation. Remember, um, that means factorial. It's not an excited N. So this is N factorial, P to the S, Q to the T, S factorial, T factorial. So let's define these. We've defined some of them already. So first, P 
Capital P is the probability of the outcome. Lowercase p is the probability of one phenotype. Remember, that was 3 fourth using the same example. Q is the probability of the other, 1 fourth. N is the total number of offspring, 5. S equals the number of offspring with P phenotype. So remember, that was 2, because 2 are going to be normal pigmentation, and 3 are going to be albino. So then this one is T is equal to 3 is offspring with Q phenotype. So if you can define your variables, this problem isn't too hard. So remember factorial here. So N factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you would do that. Um, P, 3 fourth to S squared, then 1 fourth cubed, all over 2 factorial, or, or S factorial, times 3 factorial. If you were to do all this problem out with your calculator, you'd get, amazingly, the same answer. So, again, you might think this is easier, uh, but this also isn't too bad once you find the correct term. Uh, but then again, every equation would be given to you on an exam in my course, at least. If you're watching this for another class, can't guarantee that. Okay, last thing I want to do today is a chi-squared analysis. Uh, so a chi-squared analysis here helps you determine if your expected results are, you know, in line with your observed. So, you know, all based on probability, and it helps you figure it out. So here, our equation, well, one, this assumes some things. You have to have for, um, fertilization must be random. A large number of offspring are required because any small differences uh, could throw it off. So a large number of offspring. So if you have, you know, a three to one probability and you only have two offspring, you really can't make a comparison. Uh, and then, so you use the counts or the progeny to determine it. And here you test as the difference between observed and expected. So O is observed, E is expected, is due to chance. That's the idea here. And this is the equation for chi-squared. So it's a summation sign. So every possible outcome gets its own summation. So observed minus expected squared over expected. So say we have two possible outcomes. You would do, so round versus wrinkled, uh, observed round, expected round over expected round, plus the wrinkled chances. And the best way to show this is with an example, of course. So here, our example, uh, in an F2 generation, we have 105 purple and 45 white flowers. We expect a three to one ratio. Okay, first thing we need here is our total number. So because these are out of the total, and these are our observed. So these all equal observed purple, observed white. So how do we get our expected? Well, I tell you, we have a three to one ratio. Remember, that's the same as three fourths to one fourth of probability. So we need our total value n. So n is equal to 105 plus 45, and that conveniently equals 150. Okay, so that's our total number. So I tell you there are 150 offspring and three quarters of them should be purple and one quarter of them should be white. How do you calculate that? How do you calculate the actual number of offspring? You just take that number and multiply it by that. So 150 times three fourths is equal to 112.5 purple. And then 150 times 1 fourth is equal to 37.5 white. So that's how many you expect. So if we look at our problem here, we got 105 purple, but we expected 112 purple. So now is that little difference due to chance? Or is there something else going on and it's not due to chance? So forth. So we use this chi squared to determine it. So if we write out the equation here, so chi squared, is again equal to you know the summation of observed minus expected squared over expected. So now we do it for each term. So the first one here, observed is 105 minus expected 112.5, all that squared over 1 
112.5. Notice this is a negative here, 105 minus 112.5, but you square it, so it's okay. And then right here, um, so for the white then, we have 45 minus 37.5 squared over 37.5. And then this, if you type it all in, it magically equals two. So we have a chi squared equal to two. What does that mean? How do we interpret that? Well, it requires a table. Uh, so a chi-squared table of critical values, which I'm showing here. Okay, I know this is a lot. We did talk about this um, a little bit. Uh, we will I mean, we will talk about this a little bit more in example problems, but it's not, it's not as bad as it looks. Uh, so you have to figure out how to read this table number one. So first line here, these are all probabilities. So, you know, 0 0.1 is 10%. Uh, 0 0.05 is a 5%. There's a little star there because a p-value of 0.05 is what's ideal in science. Uh, 0 0.990%, so things like that. Now, DF. DF stands for degrees of freedom. So we have to calculate that. So what is the formula for degrees of freedom? It is equal to the number of possible phenotypes minus 1. So number of possible phenotypes either purple or white. So we only have two. So this will be the easiest equation you ever do. Two minus one is equal to <laughs> is equal to one. I was getting ahead of myself. Um, so two minus one is equal to one. So now we know which line on this table to read. So we're focused on this column right here. Only degrees of freedom of one. So you're looking at this. What are these numbers in here? This is your critical value or your the uh, chi-square you're looking at. So for a degree of freedom of one and a critical value of two, you find out where that lies. So right here. Well, chi-squared of two. So these are all called critical values. And then you find where your chi-square lines within this. So right here is where two would be. So the way you formulate this question, or this answer then, so there is a 0.1 to 0.5 chance that this difference is due to random. So here, the difference between observed and expected results are due to chance. So that means a 10 to 50% chance that they're due to random chance. So this is a really, really valuable tool. So say our you know chi-squared value was you know, six, and oh, let me choose the correct color, was six. That would be, you know, a 0 0.01, a point, you know, a 1% chance that the difference is due to random chance. That is not much. So that would tell you that something is wrong. So that would tell you your expected results do not match your observed because, you know, you always have random chances and probabilities. So it doesn't fall within the error. And you need to figure out what's going on. Maybe it's non-Mendelian. Maybe you wrote the, you know, your, your expected is not right. And you want your expected to be close to your observed. And this helps you determine if it is. So super cool um, process here. And again, I will make a, a video after this. So the next one will be going over uh, practice problems using Mend Mendelian Punnett squares and the branching diagrams. And then the second video will be example problems for chi-squared analysis. So be on the lookout for those in the next couple days too. But that's all I have here. Uh, and I know, you know, some of this might be, might have been boring math, but it is a fun and exciting when you think about, you know, big picture probability and things like that. Again, that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, but I hope you all have a great day and bye-bye.